In this video of the After Effects Fundamentals series, we'll look at how you can export your animation into a video file. In After Effects terms, this is called rendering. Remember that I have these handy visual guides that go with all the videos in this After Effects Fundamentals series. Rendering out an animation can take anywhere from a few seconds to hours, and this just depends on the complexity of the animation, the length of the animation, and how fast your computer is. So before you go to render something out, here are a few things that are good to check to make it less likely that your render is a waste of time. First, you need to make sure that the composition that you're going to render out is the correct length. When you render a composition, it's only going to render the work area. The work area is this gray bar at the top of the timeline with these blue bookends. Right now, my work area is extending for the whole length of my composition, but if you drag these blue bars, you can create a smaller work area. So if you just wanted to RAM preview, or in other words, just play in After Effects, a small segment of your composition, that's how you would do this. So if you see when I hit play, it'll just keep playing this section. So when you go to render out your final video file, this is the section, this work area, that will be exported into the final video file. So to set the work area, you can use the keyboard shortcuts of B to set the beginning at your playhead and N, like the letter N, to set the end of the work area to your playhead. So this is the actual part that I want to render out. So I could hit render right now and just this would render and that would be what I want. But if you have extra space like I do and you want to actually get rid of it and trim the length of your composition, you can do that in composition settings, which is command or control K, and then you can just adjust the duration, or you can also right click on your work area and choose trim comp to work area. And that does just what it sounds like. It'll trim your composition to wherever the work area is. Next, when preparing to render, you want to make sure that you turn back on anything that takes a long time to preview that you turned off. So what I mean by that is you want to make sure that you have continuously rasterized turned on for any vector layers that look a little pixelated when they get zoomed in on or when they scale up. So if you've turned that off because it takes more time to preview animation that way, you want to make sure you turn that back on now. And that's this little button here. If you've used any effects and you turn those off to make things preview faster, then you're going to want to turn those back on now. And same for motion blur, if you're using that. If those things didn't apply to you, that's totally fine and you're probably ready to render. The first step to render a composition is to add it to the render queue. So whatever composition you want to render, you want to have that open in your timeline, then go up to composition, add to render queue. Or the keyboard shortcut is control, command, and M. This will open up the render queue tab in your timeline and will add your composition to the render queue. All the render queue is, is just a list of things that have been rendered or that you've added to render. So let's look at the options that you have here. First is the render settings. If you click on the blue text where it says best settings, you'll get a pop-up window where you can change any of these settings. I almost never open up this window and change anything because usually I want the best settings. But if for some reason you want to render out a low quality draft of your animation, you can change these from the best settings to like draft or wireframe. Also note that the resolution that you see here is what it's going to render out as. When you have the resolution right here in the composition viewer, that's just for previewing within After Effects. Next is output module, and this is the file format of your video. If you click on this blue text, you can adjust any of these settings, but most of the time, you're probably just going to want to use one of the templates that's already created for you. So to get to the templates, just click on this little down arrow right here, and these are the templates that are most commonly used. So let's start with the first one, which is the default. This is H.264, which is going to render out a .mp4 file. MP4s are probably the most universally accepted file format, and they have a balance of quality and file size. These are good for uploading to the web or to social media. Another settings template that I use a lot is high quality. If you click on the name right here, you'll see exactly what you get. So this is an Apple ProRes 422 file format, which is going to export a .mov file. 
This is going to be a really high quality file, but it's also going to come with a large file size. Another template that comes in handy is the high quality with alpha. This is an Apple ProRes 444 file format, and it's going to export a .mov file. This file format is unique because it includes information about the alpha channel, which just means that any transparency that you have in your composition is going to be in your final video file. This can be useful if you're going to take the video file and re-import it into either After Effects or other software and put it on top of, say, video footage, or if you're going to use different rendered pieces, like different scenes of your animation as video files, and you're going to stitch those together to create the full animation. If you choose a file format that doesn't support transparency, like H.264, and you have transparency within your composition, like here at the beginning of my composition, the color that's going to be visible is going to be whatever color is in your composition settings under background color. Next is output to, and this is where After Effects is going to save the video file that it exports. So if you click on the blue text, you can navigate to where you want to save the file. I'm just going to create a new folder and call it out because that's where I save anything that's exported and then just hit save. Now that we've adjusted all of these different options, the last thing to do is just hit render. When things are rendering is a great time to get up from the computer and get a snack, or at least that's what I end up doing most of the time. If you do want to get up from the computer, but you want to be notified when After Effects is done rendering, you can check this box right here. And if you have the Creative Cloud mobile app, it'll send a notification to your phone when it's done rendering. And just to show you what I just did, this is the composition that I rendered out. If you have a render that's taking a really long time and you don't need to see it actually working in the composition viewer, you don't need to see that preview, what you can do is hit the caps lock key and this will just disable the preview from playing, but it'll make your render go a little bit faster. Another way to render compositions from After Effects into video files is to use a completely separate application called Media Encoder. So to do this, you go up to Composition, and then instead of choosing Add to Render Queue, you want to choose Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. Choosing this option will automatically open up Media Encoder and add your composition to the queue, but give it a second to do all this. The benefit of using Media Encoder is that it's a separate app, so you can go back into After Effects and continue working on something else while Media Encoder is rendering. Also, Media Encoder has some different format options that you can choose from. So if you go to the text under Format or Preset, you can get to the Export Settings where you can go in and change any of these settings to exactly what you need. The H.264 format is going to export an MP4 file, but if you want an MOV, you can go down and the option that you want is going to be QuickTime. And it shows you what you're exporting right here. One of the options that Media Encoder has that After Effects does not is an animated GIF, so a .gif file. And I'm going to go more into exporting GIFs in the next video in this series. Under Output File, this is where it's going to save the video file. So if you click on that text, you can navigate to where you want to save the animation. And then when you're ready, just hit this green play button to start rendering. And just to show you the video files, this is what I exported from After Effects, and this is what I exported from Media Encoder. I chose the same settings, so these are basically the same exact thing. It's possible to render out multiple different compositions at a time, and there's actually a few different ways that you can do this. Over in the project panel, you can select multiple different compositions, then go up to Composition Add to Render Queue, and it's going to add all of those selected compositions to the queue. If you need to change the settings of these, you can do it all at once if they're all selected. And then just hit render and it will go through and render each one. If you change your mind and decide that you don't want to render something that's in the queue, all you have to do is make sure that it's selected like this and then just hit the delete key. 
You can do the same thing with media encoder. So select all of the compositions and add them to media encoder. And once you hit render, it'll just go through and render each one. Another thing that you may need to do is render out different versions, like different formats of the same composition. So let's say I want to render out this title animation as an MP4 and an MOV. I can do that all at the same time. So just first I need to add it to the render queue. And then if you go down and hit this little plus button next to output two, then it's going to output a second one. And on this one, I can change the format to high quality. You could even change the location and then just hit render and it will render both of these. In the next video of this series, I'll show you how to export your animations as GIF files. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy animating.